Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you on the Monday, 16 December. Last five trading days of the year. Wild end of the week last week, which was fun. Um, somewhat frustrating, uh, but fun. We made money, obviously, on Thursday with the UK uh, election. Uh, we gave a little bit back on Friday, trying to rebuy the euro. Just a, a a cacophony of different directional stories going off at the same time. We had uh, the Brexit story going off. We had uh, U.S. numbers going off. China trade deal going off. We had LIBOR uh, stuff going off. And at the end of it all, everything kind of, kind of dojied, right? Everything kind of opened where it closed, which is somewhat frustrating. But this often happens uh, when there's just so much going on. Both sides get stopped, and then we do a little bit of a restart. So if you look at this Euro-Dollar bar on Friday, um, it just closed marginally lower than where it opened. Um, and the open is kind of a bit weird, right? A minute after the open, it traded up 80 ticks because that was the British election. And then it traded basically between 60 and 90 for most of the day. And then only late in the day after the China news came out did it, did it come back. So it's it's a confusing bar and it doesn't make a lot of sense in, in hindsight because you're like, well, how did, that, how did that bar actually happen? We didn't really spend any time in the 90s from the European Open onwards but if you look at the ES bar same thing lots of volatility bang down to 58 bang up to 81 down to 60 you know you can see the hourly is just lots of hectic in the core of the day here where we're 84 paid 65 given 82 paid 63 given 86 paid, 60 given, down to 50, 59 and three quarters, and then the trickle back up, we close at 75. Today we've opened a little bit higher. Industrial production in China came out a little bit stronger last night. People have had time to digest this. I posted a um, political article that, that I think is the best summary of exactly what happened in this trade deal. U.S. is keeping some tariffs. They're reducing some tariffs. There's a truce on new tariffs. Now China's supposed to buy um, a good chunk of U.S. agricultural uh, and other goods um, and protect intellectual, intellectual property, which I have no idea how they're going to do that, um, and not screw around with their currency seems a bit far-fetched the last two points of the of the agreement but the main points are you know are they going to buy u.s goods uh we'll have to see and then now what does this mean for the currency the equity the global macro world uh, and how do we make money off of this it's kind of a restart here um because of all of these dojis let's start with euro dollar here we've got um we got PMIs coming out of Europe today, French, German, and then the European PMIs. This is in a couple hours time, 9, 9.15 Swiss time, and then 9.30, and then 10 a.m. This will be interesting. Um, and if these do come in hot, this will be a driver on Euro here. So basically, what, is it, what does a doji mean? It means indecision. So sellers will have control below 111. Um, buyers will have control. I'm going to say uh, above 111.80. We're going to respect these highs here. But somewhere between 80 and figure, if it's super strong PMIs, buyers will retain control. So we're coming into this stuff square. We have our minds fresh and clear. Um, let's see how these PMIs go. It will be a driver today uh, in Euro. We're expecting better than expecting PMIs. These are 
these are services PMIs. Uh, obviously, services PMIs have retained relative strength, uh, even though manufacturing PMIs in Europe have been crushed. So let's see, especially the German one. Let's see how German services are doing. The other interesting um, growth indicators coming out are, are UK numbers. UK numbers are now going to start being more meaningful now that the Brexit uh, kerfuffle looks to be coming to an end. Uh, we're going to keep a close eye, both manufacturing and services PMI. A negative number will not be well received by... Uh, by the sterling, by cable or sterling yen or um, euro sterling. So we're right in the middle of nowhere here. We don't really have an axe to grind on what to do with this, but um, careful on negative numbers here. So the euphoria of the election is priced in this bar. You see this up to 135. We went down to 133 and the typical like, oh shit, there's a lot of work to do still. And now um, people are going to start really digging in and looking closely at the at the UK economy and how strong it is, which will have an effect on the bargaining power uh, Boris and his team will bring to the table while trying to negotiate this trade deal with Europe. So watch these closely. Uh, we think the reaction on a negative PNI, PMI would be the tradable side. The numbers in UK have been pretty pretty okay uh, over the last couple of months. So, um, and plus the market I think is long sterling uh, after the news. So be careful of a negative number there. In the US, we also have services later on today. Um, again, after all of these events have been cleared off of our plate, China trade deal. Brexit, um, we need to start watching these numbers to see where the economy is and, and what's driving things. Swiss Franc is telling us there's trouble on the horizon. Uh, Dollar Swiss dogied with the rest of them, but Euro Swiss did not doji. It got smashed. Uh, it was unclear to me what the hell happened from 110.10 all the way down to 109.30. Um, we rebounded up to about 92. You can see this bar here. Bang. What was that? I was asking around. Of course, I live here, so I should know these things, but I have no idea what the hell happened here. But I do know when I see a bar like that in Euro Swiss, it's, it's just sell rally mode, right? So um, we got back up to 97 kind of kicking myself for for not banging out some more euro swiss up there but point is euro swiss i, I don't know if it's euro it could be year end hedging um, but it could also just be fear so be careful like if one of the fear indicators out there and there are many uh, is euro swiss that is a negative bar there's no bones about it um, they smacked that pony uh on Friday, Friday the 13th, no less. Dollar yen, like everyone else, dojied. This is an interesting point technically now, 109.72. There will be some action up there. On the downside, uh, 108.40. We all know about this level. We were all surprised last week when it did not break. Uh, but now, it's an excellent uh, technical jumping point. There will be some action on both sides of this. So if we get up to 73, have a look around what's happening. We get down to 40, have a look around what's happening. Uh, especially 40 on the downside looks like a good plunge point. Uh, so keep that in mind. Dollar CAD traded up to 06 on the fix. Uh, but in general, it's just kind of doji as well. Don't know what to do with this now. Pulling, pushing and pulling global macro on CAD, those employment numbers sucked, but then the US dollar got hit everywhere, so dollar CAD went lower. Uh, don't know what to do with this. The cousins Aussie and Kiwi put bearish days in on Friday, pretty close to bearish engulfing in Aussie. Kiwi had a big tail. This looks negative. Uh, 
these two guys are kind of saying buy the rumor, sell the fact on the trade deal. But you need confirmation now. Uh, 65.82, a new daily low is confirmation of this bar. Uh, Aussie, the new low will be uh, 68.63, which, by the way, looks like a does not look like a break trade. It looks like a trap because uh, you have this little gap here into support. Um, so just be careful. These look negative. Um, but you need confirmation, and I don't think selling low ones is the way to go on this. Uh, if anything, wait for confirmation and then try and resell higher ones. Quickly, ES, uh, Doji, this is now a super important pivot, 3158, which was the all-time high on Wednesday. And it was the go point um, on Thursday. Now we print it down there. Nice little pivot. If you want to get short equities, this is your starting point. So prices down below 3158, you sell. Um, if you're desperate to get short, wait for the stretch highs because this could stretch a long way now. This could stretch to 32.25 very easily, very quickly. Um, so wait for the stretch highs. So you're literally offering 32.18s today. This is the stretch high, or you're going to smack it um, below 31.58. As you all know, we don't really recommend selling low ones in S&Ps, especially on this kind of bullish um, bull market situation. So same kind of thing. Look for that print down there if you want to get short, uh, and then try and sell a high one. We're square S&Ps, no dog in that fight. Um, we're waiting for the skies to clear uh, before we really get involved. As you can see, the book is very square here. Uh, we're going to be nimble. We're going to be tactical today. Uh, probably nimble and tactical all week. We do have some interesting uh, central bank action later in the week. The trading calendar, the economic calendar is full this week. Should be some good action. Um, so, you know, front foot, let's try and make some dough this week. Uh, close out the year on a positive note. And then um, take 10 days and get ready for uh, 2020. All right, I've said enough today. Good luck out there, people. Make some dough. You deserve it. Um, I will see you all tomorrow. Ciao.